I need all your knowledge. If we could just touch heads, maybe I could. Okay. All right. I'm a bourbon expert. You are a master distiller. Yeah. The quintessential American spirit. Is it rare for someone from another country to be a master distiller of an American spirit? So I think I'm the only Irish master distiller here, like of American whiskey. Wow. You're stealing our jobs. No, that's but pretty like, much it. Yeah, yeah. They, but like, by the way, all my ancestors came from Ireland. I'm not saying I'm Irish, but I, I'm saying that I have a tendency towards alcoholism. The Woodford bottle. Did you guys know that that was going to? We did not know it would be a proverbial game changer. Okay. The rest of the world, when you say whiskey, they think scotch. Yeah. And then you talk premium spirits, cognac. So how can we interrupt that equation? This new bourbon has to look stylish, it has to look sharp, and that led to our bottle design. That can't be bourbon, it looks too cool, you know, it looks too oh, smart. That's interesting. And people will buy a bottle because it looks good one time. If the contents aren't good, they're not gonna come back. Right. The legacy that your family has is so rare. We're one of the few fa still family-owned brands out there. That photo looks like a Tennessee Williams play. Like, there is like so much story in that photo. He just started it as a salesman. Really? Right out of college, yeah, just needed a job. Started traveling around selling <clears throat> whiskey from a horse and buggy. So everyone's in the family business, right? And you guys have never argued once? No. Never How have. is that possible? No. Kentucky was originally Virginia. We were yeah. part of the original Virginia colony. Virginia says, we need some government out here, and that means we need counties. Bourbon County is one of those early county names, and thus, bourbon whiskey is the whiskey from Bourbon County. During the westward expansion, farmers were incentivized to grow corn. Yeah. So if you can't eat all that corn quickly enough, it rots. So what's the easiest way to deal with corn? Mash it, distill it down, and take it back east and sell it by the barrel. I mean, I like corn on the cob. I really like corn. You know, that Mexican street corn's good, but bourbon's better. There is something about the charm of Kentucky that fits the bourbon personality. Kentucky is an ingredient. The weather is important. Corn grows well here, that's important. But one of the main ingredients is the water. So Kentucky sits on limestone. As water travels through limestone, it picks up minerals, which give the water, gives the water a crisp, clean taste, which translates into a crisp, clean whiskey. And importantly, it also removes iron. You need iron-free water to make whiskey, otherwise, as the whiskey ages in the barrel, the iron reacts with stuff from the barrel and turns the whiskey black and makes it taste foul. I was so, just about to say that. Yeah, you know, that's what iron-free um, water. It's interesting. Yeah. I, always, I always thought I was the only one that knew that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, cheers to shared knowledge. Early Kentuckians were all Scotch-Irish. That's right. I, who okay. were whiskey-making people, who brought their knowledge from the home country. Right. to make their whiskey in a new environment. And you can't replicate that anywhere else. Why do you hate America so much, Chris? Well, <laughs> because everybody doesn't drink bourbon. Yeah, so that's a typical stave. There's only staves, there's no glue or anything, just the, the metal hoops holding it together. It's just pressure. So there's so, no glue. No glue, no, no nails, no nothing. It's a feat of engineering and an art to imagine that they can take that much wood surface held together with just pressure hoops right and it'll hold liquid that tells you what kind of engineering is going on there so much of the flavor is because of wood it's wood what's cool about this is you can actually see this red line this is where the whiskey went into the wood that's how oh, far it went into the it wood absorbed in that far so it's like charcoal it filters out impurities gives it color and flavor in the summer it sucks it in and then our, our cold winters it forces the whiskey back into the barrel and just time you can't beat time for a lot of reasons but for bourbon in particular time is key i think it's so cool but like the barrel seems like you know an 18 century tool but i'm surprised someone's not like yeah you know what you know what's even better than wood is plastic <laughs> you know I mean? like, so the theory is that because everything was shipped in barrels you didn't throw away a barrel you reused it right yeah. so if it had something funky in it how am i going to get rid of that funky smell i'm going to burn it or char it 
mm. you know, and scrape all that up. And then at some point, somebody put some whiskey in that barrel and said, wait a minute. Bourbon was probably created by a fluke. This wood is, is massively important to bourbon, and we can only use it once. That's a legality thing for bourbon, right? Correct. Like they could use the barrel for another... Scotch, rum, tequila, all of, m most, all the major spirits. When you'll start sending me free bourbon, would that free. be on a weekly basis? Or well, a what we'll do is, well, every barrel we put down today, we'll ship right. to you when it comes of age. And those barrels, my kids have rooms. Could we put barrels in their rooms? Well, here's the thing, are you bonded with the Tax and Trade Bureau? Do you have fire suppression? Do you I, have adequate ventilation? Yeah, I, I can <laughs> breathe in there, barely. In the early 1900s, 2030s, bourbon was the most popular spirit in America. You can even yeah. look, uh, we'll talk about Four Roses, if you look right. at that famous picture of the, the sailor kissing his wife in front of Times Square, actually Four Roses is at the very top. Oh, wow. yeah. But times change, and clear spirits, cocktails became very popular here. We didn't want to drink bourbon. It was light, bright, sweet, pink, lime green party atmosphere. Coolers, flavored vodkas, it was all about the flavor of the day. Steakhouses going out of business, cigars going out of business, great red wines going out of business. It was disco. It, it was disco, that, that's yeah. a good answer. Yeah. It was disco. <laughs> Japan and Europe really supported the bourbon industry uh, for decades uh, until we finally figured out here uh, in America that bourbon's actually really good and we should try to keep a lot of it for ourselves. So you're saying you don't love America. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> and finally, there was a pushback. I want butter on my baked potato. Right, right, I right. want flavor. So the return of flavor was part of the return of bourbon. People are looking for authenticity. There's art to it, there's science to it. I'm an engineer. Yeah. Um, there's kind of black magic. It's five easy steps. You start with grain, mill it, mash it, ferment it, distill it, put it in a barrel. It's then all. you drink it, then you yeah. apologize well, I'm about to, to make the it. people you yeah. know. <laughs> you gotta be patient and you gotta kind of give a damn. So you do all that right and then eight years later you get something like this. this it is, is crazy how yeah. it seems like an un-American thing to wait eight uh, years uh, uh, for something. Because the Irish invented it. We're good at patience. Right? We're good at patience. patience yeah. right? And let's go back further. There's evidence that whiskey of some form or fashion was being made during Alexander the Great's day. Wow. It is the oldest spirit known to man. Really? So what's wrong with enjoying it today? I don't know. The violence it causes. <laughs> 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 or the violence it removes. It's right. like, hey, Jim, you're an okay guy. A key factor of our industry is responsibility. Because some people weren't doing that, that led us into the temperance movement, that led us into prohibition. So again, we need for the good of society and as individuals to enjoy our spirit responsibly. But that doesn't mean don't have a drink. And, no. and you're saying kids should drink. No. No. I mean, when I'm talking about kids, I'm, I'm like five-year-old. No, no, no. 21 plus. 21, 21 plus. Plus, yeah. plus what? Yeah. Five-year-olds? <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I'm always kind of nervous about like how you add water and how much water. You, Jim, you put anything you want okay. in with that. You put, we'll go get you some milk. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, Jim. The cocktail is an American invention. I didn't know. That. Oh yeah, cocktails are 100%. What of... are these Europeans doing? Well, they're trying to steal our ideas. They, they didn't, didn't have, have potatoes corn. either. They didn't have corn. No, they were in bad shape. Even though you and I are European. Yeah. But, but. <laughs> what should guide me? Should I be a collector? Should I be adventurous? My advice is simply do what you enjoy. Right. Because that's what our industry is all about. We're in the hospitality industry. Right. It's about having an enjoyable moment. And if bourbon is part of that, we've done our job. What if in 10 years, we're sitting across from each other on vacation, and I'm the bourbon expert, and you're coming to me for advice? I'd say we're in bad shape. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying just, it could happen? Just, <laughs> just, just saying.